Hello and uh, welcome to the Global Poker League and our strategy segment where we ask our guest pro to take us through a key hand from the GPL. I'm joined by Jonathan Little of the Las Vegas Moneymakers. He's going to take us through a really interesting hand from the Eurasian Six Max between Sergei Lebedev of the Moscow Wolverines and Fabrice Soulier of the Paris Aviators. Uh, Jonathan, uh, take us through this hand for us. All right, so this starts off like an innocuous hand besides Sergei, who has been pretty tight so far at this table. He decides to open 9-5 of hearts from the cutoff. That may look a little bit crazy, but eh, it's okay. It's a nice hand to have in your raising range because people certainly not expect you to have 9-5 of hearts when you're opening, especially if you've been somewhat tight. And Sergey's aware of this. Sergey's a world-class professional and he knows how to play. So Fabrice, realizing this, decides to just call with his ace-queen suited, which I think is also fine. It's okay to keep your opponent in with a relatively wide range of hands. So, fantastic flop for yeah, Fabrice. Well, it seems like almost the perfect flop for Fabrice. So Fabrice is going to check. Sergey is going to bet, as you think he would do. This is a spot where if Sergey had absolute nothing, like 9-5 of spades, maybe he gives up. But with the backdoor flush draw, because notice if any heart comes on the turn, he's going to be pretty happy. Or even something like a jack or an 8, that gives him some potential. Um, this is a spot where he definitely wants to make a bet. So Fabrice decides after a while to check raise. And I'm not a big fan of check raising from out of position because when your opponent calls, they're very often going to have a relatively strong hand, you would think. And of course, ace-queen is a good hand, right? This is a strong hand. There's nothing wrong with check raising ace-queen in a vacuum. Like if this was the only hand Fabrice played for the rest of his life, maybe he should do this. But there are very few hands you actually want to check raise in this spot. Like, which hands do you want to check raise? Maybe ace, queen, pocket tens, pocket fours, queen ten, and king jack, and jack nine? This is a very, very tight range. And when your range is that narrow, your opponent can often play somewhat well. So anyway, Fabrice does check raise, and then everyone was just thinking, okay, hands over. <laughs> Move on, nothing to see here. But no, there's still a lot more fireworks to happen. <laughs> so after a bit of thought, Sergey elects to re-raise tiny. And I don't know what's going on here, because Sergei is representing a very snug range, like aces, kings, ace, queen, queens, tens, and fours. Maybe queen, ten. That's about it. And then maybe some bluffs. So this goes back to almost the same range Fabrice is representing, but, he could, but um, Sergei could have aces and kings in there as well. So we see Fabrice electing to call here, leaving himself not really too many behind to uh, play out the rest of this pot. Um, and we'll see um, Sergei hit the sort of perfect card on the uh, turn to continue with his bluff. Well, so let's take a look. So Fabrice is in the tank here, because now what do you do? You, you check raise the guy and he re-raised you back. You're, you're not loving the spot at all. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I'm never in this spot, <laughs> but I don't think he can fold. I mean, Fabrice has almost the best hand he could possibly have. If he ever folds this hand, you have to ask what else am I folding here? And everything besides two pairs and sets. So we get an interesting card on the turn because this should be quite bad for Fabrice. But really, if you think about the range I just gave Sergey, Fabrice either had the best hand already on the flop or he doesn't. And this card should really not change it too much because does Sergey ever have Queen Jack playing it this way? I would just guess absolutely not. Does he ever have Jack 10? Probably not. King Jack improved to a pair, but he still beat it. Would he ever play Ace King this way? I don't think so. <sighs> I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on in this hand, but. This is a, an instance where Fabrice's check raise on the flop, I think, has gotten him into trouble. And, you know, really, most people are not going to do what Sergey does here. Uh, oh, betting well, and then yeah, re-raising the flop. To, uh, and then pile it in. Well, I think he has to shove the turn. If he finds himself on the spot, on the turn, I think he just has to shove because now he has a very good draw. But by check raising in the spot, given that Sergey is a great professional who's not afraid to get out of line, Fabrice got himself in a little bit of trouble. So... Now the question is, becomes, should Fabrice call? And Fabrice was saying in the commentary, like, I just can't believe this guy's ever bluffing here. And then, even then, what bluffs could he have? Like I said, it's going to be King Jack and Jack Nine. And maybe those actually check the turn. Because they picked up some showdown value. They beat a few sporadic hands, like random 10 nines that decided to get crazy. Or maybe they think Fabrice is never going to fold a queen. But Fabrice thinks for quite a while and ends up folding. And yes, we... it's a tough spot. I mean, and this is what happens when you check raise the flop. I'm always telling my students, do not check raise the flop very often because when you do and your opponent sticks around in any meaningful way, you're often somewhat confused as to what's going on. And here, Sergey just decided, this is my pot. Yeah. I'm taking this pot. And he, 
He scoop -a looped it up. That was his. Yeah, after quite a lot of agonizing uh, on the webcam, we see uh, Fabrice eventually uh, elects to fold, uh, only leaving himself uh, 12 fouls behind in that match. And it was really a, a tough decision for Fabrice. And uh, the viewers on the GPR really saw him getting put through the, the ringer in this um, six max. Um, Jonathan, any final thoughts on the hand? When you have your, the best hands in your range, you want to try to play them in a manner that does not lead you to folding them, ever. You're just not folding. If you have ace-queen here, you just cannot fold. And this is a spot where Fabrice played it in a, such a way that it, he was convinced, and you know, rightfully so, because like I said, Sergei had been pretty tight. He had not been out of line at all so far. He became convinced that Sergei had a good hand, and if you think your opponent is exactly queen-10, ten, tens, or fours, well, you should fold. The problem is, is that we're here on the Global Poker League, and these players came to play. Well, my thanks to uh, Jonathan Little there. Uh, that's all for this particular segment. Join us again next time at the Global Poker League. Hasta la vista. Connect with us on social media for league updates and download our app GPL TV to stay on top of everything GPL.